Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. Today, we're gonna take a look at what has been going on in the market, some upcoming projects, as well as some of my recent trades, which you probably won't like very much. As usual, nothing in this video is financial advice. And if you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? So let's first quickly go over a couple of mints that recently happened that did really well. We had the Nobodies pull a 5X from its mint price, which was pretty expensive for a 10K collection as these minted for roughly 0.2 Ethereum. However, they went all the way to one ETH, currently sitting at 0.8. We also had Citizens Conflict, which was a free mint, which went all the way up to 0.45. I did see Dingaling sweep like 50 of these. So GG to anybody who had whitelist for these because they were the real winners. As for upcoming projects this week, the biggest one on Ethereum is definitely going to be Monolith. They are releasing the results for their free mint on Wednesday, February 7th. And I do expect these to perform really well on the secondary market, but let's be real. You probably didn't get one, right? The supply is only 120. I don't think I got one either. Just FYI, I wasn't trying to dunk on you, but the way they're going about it, they were asking you to connect to Twitter. They were asking you to connect a wallet. There was certain collections that had priority. So I'm assuming if you don't have a big presence on Twitter or you don't have a strong wallet, like that's been diamond handing a ton of big NFTs or like an expensive vault for a long time, you probably didn't make the cut. And that's just how it is, especially for a small supply collection like this. But like I said, I do expect them to perform well on the secondary market. So if I can get a reasonable entry, I'm going to buy some of these. But if it opens up and it's like at 10 or 15 ETH, then I'm just gonna move on with my life, right? They do have a second collection after the monolith. So I'm going to definitely try to get whitelist for that one. But like I said, on Wednesday, I do think a lot of people are going to be paying attention to this. As for some new upcoming projects, the first one we have is called Aria, which as you could see on their Twitter, there is literally nothing. I did, however, speak to somebody who's working with them and I got to see some gameplay footage, which does look really good. This is a game that has been in development for quite a while, so they do have a lot to work with. And if you look in their Twitter bio, you can see that they mentioned they have investments from both Riot Games and Tencent. They also mentioned that they are going to have their own token, which is currently the meta. So like I said, nothing that I can say about this project just yet. I'm just putting it on your radar because you guys are always asking me for that early stuff. After that, we have SA World, which I spoke about recently. However, they did finally just kick off their farming campaign. And you're going to see there are a ton of projects doing farming campaigns, but basically you have to download their plugin. And once you do that and install it, you're going to get this little pop-up here as well as this little dancing character above your name, but you're going to get this pop-up on your Twitter where you can pull up this dashboard. And from here, they have quests like daily quests and noob quests as they call them, where you can farm their token. And when you get enough tokens, you're going to be able to buy items in the shop, including this treasure chest, which as you can see from here, if it's not too small for you, you can either straight up get whitelist, but you can also get these fragments, which if you collect all eight of the fragments, as you can see here, you can claim a whitelist spot for this project. Now, this is going to be a free mint. It's also going to be a decently small supply. So I do think this one is worth getting your hands on. And it's pretty simple farming their token. Now, a couple things. One, you get some referrals. Try to grab one of these referral links if you can, if you're early enough. However, in the quests, they also have this one here, which is like this bag. And let's see if I can get one to pop up if I just go on the home. No, I don't think it's going to pop up. Anyways, you would see a floating little bag where if you reply to the tweet that has the floating little bag, you are going to get some extra points. Now, their NFT is going to be for their overall ecosystem. They do have some games that they are developing like Summoner's Arena as well as Play City. And if you check their white paper, they do mention they're going to have their very own token, which again, tokens are the meta. Next up, let's continue on the road of the farming meta we have Pixelmon launching their very own questing system outside of their upcoming Pixel Pals game, which is also going to be used to farm the Mon token. And same thing, you connect your Twitter to their platform, and then you're going to be able to do things like spin the wheel once per day. Let's see what I hit. Let's, yo, it's my second spin, and it's the second time I hit the jackpot. Let's go. Oh, I didn't hit the full one. I thought I hit the full jackpot. <laughs> 
And then other than that, you can like follow their Twitter, retweet, interact with their tweets, and it's going to get you more points. Now, the way you earn the most points is obviously through referrals, as this is how you stand out from everybody else, because everybody can spin the wheel, everybody, which is purely luck based, everybody can do these tasks where you follow the page, but referrals is really where you're going to get the most points. Speaking of which, my referral code is going to be in the description down below. Now, outside of Ethereum, there's a ton going on with ordinals. We have the puppets that are absolutely pumping. I think they're going to point one Bitcoin. You have quantum cats, which just sold out. And I believe trading is going to go live on them today. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the floor price of that collection is. Same thing on Solana. There is a ton going on. You have the teddies that minted two days ago. This was a super hype project and it's already under its pre-sale price. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with some other Solana collections that are really hyped. The ones that everybody is talking about are of course, Marms and Sandbar. And then you also have chains like Say, which was making a lot of noise for a while. There's still some profits to be made with projects there. But for me personally, I'm trying to position myself ahead of these narratives, even with chains that have not released yet. So I'm looking at bear chain projects. I'm looking especially at blast projects because everybody has their money staked in blast basically. So when the money is unlocked, everybody's going to be talking about blast. So I do think some of those projects can do well. I believe it's also the nearest that's going to be releasing soon. So some projects that I'm looking at there, we have Blastopians, which I like the art for this, right? It's pixel art, but there is literally zero information about this project. Even if you go to their website, it says coming soon. Not that I would expect this project to be anything more than an art only type of project. After that, we have blast runners who say they are building a PVP on chain game. And I also see Blastaways, which is, it's a funny name, getting a lot of hype. This is a meme coin play, not an NFT play. As far as I know, again, these projects, I have not spoken to any of the team members for my research consists of literally looking at their Twitter and talking to people in DMs if it's hype, right? People who don't have any information on these projects. So please do your own research. Don't just YOLO into these because I mentioned these in the video. I'm just letting you know where I'm trying to position myself because it's usually the first ones out the gate that do well. And after that, everybody's pretty much just chasing after the profits. Now, I will say with all these different chains and, and all the farming going around, like don't burn yourself out. There is so much going on. Even me, like I don't know where to focus sometimes, especially when you see people making profits in meme coins and airdrops and NFTs on whatever chain, like it's best to focus on your lane. And right now there is so much going on that I want to do. Even like this Magic Eden, they announced their reward program with the gems, which you can earn by trading on their platform, by placing bids, by gambling with their lucky buys. If that's something you're into, I haven't done that. And then from there, you can earn gems, which will hopefully lead to a really juicy airdrop. Now, this is something that interests me, especially since I missed out on Jupiter. However, I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. If I'm trading or if I see a collection that I want to trade, fine, I'll do it on Magic Eden. But I don't want to get caught in a position where I'm forcing myself to trade on collections that I'm unsure of just to try to score some points because a ton of people got wrecked on Blur doing exactly that. But it really does feel like a battle for our attention with all these airdrops, right? Airdrops where you have to farm on socials and airdrops where you have to use their protocol and even play to airdrop with all these games, right? We have Mavia, Nifty Island, Apron, Pixels, Mixmob, the list goes on and on. And while I do think it is good to have accounts on every single one and maybe do the minimum task to qualify for an airdrop, I do think there's a lot more benefits going hard into a couple of them and really putting your time and effort into the ones that you understand and could maximize your airdrop as opposed to just trying to literally do everything. And I know you're going to see somebody say like, I made a hundred thousand dollars airdrop with this protocol, like whatever, just ignore it. Like great for them. That's amazing. Be happy for them and just focus on your lane. Like it doesn't matter. We're all going to miss out on stuff. Now, the other thing is a lot of these games, like it's cool that they're doing airdrops. It's a great way for them to get players. If I don't like the game, like I'm not going to play it at that point, it just becomes a job. Like if I'm spending hours 
playing a game that I don't like, farming an airdrop that I have no idea how much money I'm gonna get. Like, what's the point? It's literally a job. I might as well go work. However, there is one game that I really wanna try. I don't even know if they have any play to airdrop mechanics. I don't think they do, but that game is off the grid. And I did just find in their Discord a sign up sheet where you could sign up to try their play test, which I believe is happening in the near future. So I'm really excited for this game. I think it's gonna perform very well. Hopefully the game is far along. So if you wanna sign up for that, I will put it in the description down below. Next up, I did want to quickly look at some of the recent announcements out of Seedify as they have announced a ton of new incubations. First off, we have Paradise Tycoon, which does look like a really cool game. They have things like farming and crafting where you build up your own private island. So great addition. I'm looking forward to the ICO for this one. We also have Style Protocol, which they announced, I believe, last week. However, the IDO for this one is happening soon on February 14th and 15th. And then today we have the Animalia token Anim, which is going to go live. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that one performs. Yesterday, we finally got to see the Jan token, which is the token for Storm Warfare, which is a World War II themed trading card game. And if we take a look on crypto rank, you could see the all time high for the public round was about 4.64 X and the all time high for the private round was a 6.5 X. Now these numbers have gone down now, right? They didn't stay at the all time high and you don't get all your money on day one for the public round. It was 20% for private. It was 15%. So it is vested over time right now. The public round is at a 2.5 X. And while it can definitely get momentum and go up from here, a 2X isn't something you want to see on your tokens, especially not when it's vested for a few months. But that is the beauty of Seedify because they have their refund policy. So my strategy is really just to YOLO into every single public round I can get my hands on. And if you aren't satisfied with the returns in a seven day period, as long as you haven't claimed your tokens, you can get a full refund on your money. So my strategy is really just a numbers game, right? Go into as many as I possibly can. And then hopefully at one point we do hit a 100 X or whatever it is because they have hit a ton of 100 X's in the past. Their highest return was even a 698 X at its all time high. Finally, let's take a look at a couple of my plays, because as I said at the beginning of this year, I wanna be really transparent with you guys of my trades. You might not like all my trades, but this is just, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. So L37 is one that I minted luckily for free. I originally called it going to six ETH and then I said it was going to 10. It did hit 10.7 ETH, so it hit my price target. I did not sell because I do believe in this project long-term. However, it did have a pretty nasty dip of over 30% since it was at 10.7, all the way down to 7 Ethereum. Luckily, it has recovered a bit. I know Jur did sweep this himself with his own money. However, they did hold an AMA where they spoke about the upcoming utilities, which includes whitelist, as well as a free airdrop for their PFP, a token airdrop, a land airdrop, the revenue share, which they have mentioned in the past. So for those who are asking me, yes, I do continue to hold this NFT and I do see it crossing over 10 Ethereum again. Now, a little update on my shrapnel bags because I did have both the shrap tokens as well as the shrap operators. And this isn't FUD. I'm not FUDing, but I did sell my holdings of shrapnel after I tested the game. Now, it's nothing against the game, okay? I like the game. I like what the team is building. I love the team. They are great people and I get along with them. I don't want to burn my relationship with them, but looking at it from an investment point of view, I think the game is way, is still too early for a lot of people. I should have checked a, or two weeks ago when they had their original play test, which unfortunately I wasn't able to play. However, if you look at the price of the operators, they're down roughly about 35% from two weeks ago. So it does seem like they are correlating with the play test and maybe people's reactions. Maybe not, maybe it's, it was just a buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing. And it has nothing to do with the play test. However, like I tested it, I live streamed it on Friday. Personally, I expected more out of the game. I thought they were further along and I understand this is an alpha test and it's not supposed to be a, a full game. It's not supposed to have 
a lot of stuff. I guess I'm comparing it a bit to Dead Drop, where Dead Drop did feel like it was further along. But my whole thesis on shrapnel, other than like Becker pumping it, was that it was hopefully gonna have a parallel moment where the Prime token, as well as the avatars, did like a 5X or a 6X on the secondary market because of all the people who were playing the game and were enjoying the game and the, the game was actually playable. In its current state, it's very early for shrapnel. I don't think they're gonna have that big moment in the near future where a ton of people are playing it because they won't be able to play it. The game's just way too early. Now I know they have some tournaments coming up, so maybe that's gonna turn it around. And if I sold the bottom here, I'm perfectly fine with, I didn't lose any money, right? I barely made any money, but I didn't lose any money. Yes, it would have been good selling this when it was at 44 cents and selling the operators when they're above 0.4. That would have been the optimal trade to do in hindsight, but I'm not gonna feel bad if I sell the bottom here because I feel I'm making a logical or a rational decision versus an emotional one, and I'm like reverse FOMOing out of my trade. So that's just an update. Again, I'm not fudding. Like I still fully believe in what they're building. I really like the game. I don't think it's a bad long-term play, but I just feel there's other places where I can allocate my money right now. And the only reasons I see this going up right now are one, Becker just shilling it and saying, hey, it's going to 10 billion FDV, then yeah, obviously it's gonna pump, or two, the entire gaming market going up, in which case I'm already positioned, so I'm just gonna go up with it anyways, and I don't need to have my money in this project. So I'll continue to play it, I'll continue to publicly support them and root for them, but when it comes to an investment, I'm moving my money elsewhere. I haven't decided where yet. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the transparency and you aren't too mad at me or the team if they're watching this. Hopefully they're not too mad at me. Okay, I still love you guys, please. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla. Peace. Uh, 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 uh,